and we are live. Doubling your Amazon sale without adding cost? Is that even possible? Stick around to find out because on today's NMK show, we've invited two um, renowned e-commerce experts, award-winning speakers who are going to show you how to double your Amazon sales without adding any cost. Marg and Kevin, how are you guys doing today? I'm really well because it's one o'clock in the morning. Ask Kev. <laughs> <laughs> how does it feel, Kev? How does it feel to be Marg and Megla for a change? <laughs> I'll let you know in about a... an hour's time. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got golf tomorrow. This is going to mess up your golf, right? <laughs> uh, I'll have to have a, I'll have to have a, a lay in or something. Sort of rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot for that, Kev. So this is especially oh, really. for Sean oh, yeah. and Seth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wouldn't miss it. Yeah, well. yeah. And by the way, Sean and Seth are also coming to India. So this is something that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sean has been to India a couple of years ago and he's going to share his experiences. So both of them, uh, no, actually only Sean is coming to India. He's going to speak at Ecom India Summit and India Sourcing Trip. We'll talk about all of that. In case anyone's interested in the trip, go to indiasourcingtrip.com uh, to get more information. Dates are October 10th to the 17th. And we also have a conference, Ecom India Summit, that is um, held right before India Sourcing Trip and it's absolutely free for India Sourcing Trip attendees. So you get two events for the price of one. It cannot get better than this. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. We're gonna invite Sean and Seth onto hey. the live stream here. Hey, Hi guys, how are you, how are you doing? Yeah, you, you oh gave gosh. Seth a, a little minor, minor coronary because you said he was coming to India, so. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if I well, fall over time. here, guys, you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Good, good morning to you both. Nice to, nice to see you. China one single time, and he's never made the effort to make a trip uh, more than four hours since then. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate awesome. you, uh, you guys having us today. <laughs> pleasure. That's yeah, we're pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and um, of course, you know, you're you're very special because Kevin has. Woken up at 1 a.m. for you guys, so this is exclusively yeah. for Sean and Seth. Because <laughs> all week awesome. our audience has been saying, hey, Sean and Seth, I love those guys. So I thought, wow, I better stick around. <laughs> well, let's do it. Couldn't miss the action. Concept. Can't wait to serve your community. I think you guys are going to be blown away by what uh, Seth and I are sharing with you today. I'll be doing most of the presenting, and then we'll get a little commentary from Seth along the way because he has a ton of experience in this area. Excellent. Amazing, amazing. So Sean and said, do you guys want to do a bit of an introduction? Of course, I mean, everybody knows you, you're everywhere in every conference, every podcast, but in case people have been, you know, living under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> so Seth, lead the way, buddy. Yeah, I, sure. So um, long ago, Sean and I were actually building brands kind of pre Amazon. Mm -hmm. So we always talk about we came from a different world, we would drive our own media, we you know, we were buying television ads and newspaper ads and and building our own brands before Amazon was really a thing. So when we stepped in in 2013, 2014 and started building our own brands, we kind of were, we had a big head start. So we were able to accelerate pretty quickly. We ended up launching more than a thousand private label products. We built 53 brands. We sold a lot of them and hit our first million dollar month uh, within like 18 months of starting. So we got off to a quick start. We learned a ton of stuff by making a bunch of mistakes. And I think uh, one of the biggest mistakes we ever made um, led to the breakthrough that we're going to share with you guys today. So that's a little bit about where we've been and, um, you know, how we got to know all the, the things that we're going to share with you today. Just let me add to that the strategy that I'm sharing here, Seth and I personally use this as we were launching over 1,000 private label products since way back in 2014. And this strategy Although it's easy for me to explain, it's going to be difficult to grasp. So go ahead, take screenshots, uh, make notes. But this has worked across the board 100% of the times when applied it. And in fact, Magla, I wanted to tell you this. Uh, my son, yeah. Cash, who's 16 years old, just applied this strategy to his Amazon sales last week in 2.5 times, two and a half X his sales in the first week just by doing this. Oh, my gosh. That's wow. incredible. Yeah, we're, we're excited. Okay, so it's a little easier yeah. for him, but this works across the board. You're going to be blown away at the simplicity 
but the profound effectiveness of this amazing strategy called creative cloning. Amazing. So let's get right into it. I'm going to share your slides. Are you guys ready? Ready. Yeah, let's do this. All, All right. right. Over to you. Thanks a lot for inviting. Uh, can't wait to hang out with you guys in India during the sourcing trip, and hopefully we can talk a little bit about that later. So this is yes. creative cloning, folks. This is all about how to double your Amazon sales in the next 30 days without adding any additional cost. So what is, if you think about it as a seller, what is the simplest and most profitable way to double your sales? Well, if you ask 10 sellers, all 10 sellers are going to give you a, a unique answer. But today, I'm talking about literally doubling in 30 days. It's a process that you now know we call creative cloning. So sit tight. I'm going to blow your mind here. Creative cloning has created more sales for us than almost any other strategy. And the crazy part, you've probably never seen anything like this before. And like I told you, it's worked 100% of the times when we've applied it. Seth and I have used this exact concept to 10 X our sales on multiple products more than once. In fact, look at this screenshot of our month over month growth that we achieved using this exact same strategy. Seth, do you remember these days? I do all too well. <laughs> <laughs> so this strategy will work in any category. All right. So don't sit back there and make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, my product's different. This won't work in my niche. I'm going to show you an example here, but I want you to think about how you can apply this specifically to your business. And then I prepared something amazing for your audience. We're going to give you a downloadable step-by-step -step action list where you can get started quickly applying creative cloning into your business. No strings attached, no email opt-in. Just take it, swipe, and deploy. This is typical what we see for Amazon sellers. You're out there doing product research. You find it, an amazing manufacturer, hopefully on one of these sourcing trips. You design beautiful packaging, you perform all the keyword research and analysis that you need, and you build this amazing Amazon listing and things start selling well. Well, congratulations, you found an amazing opportunity and it's being profitable and all of that hard work that you put into to creating this brand or this product listing is paying off. But I want you to understand that when the stars align and you have the right product, the right time, the right listing, Amazon could be amazing. But this is where a lot of sellers make a huge mistake. Once you have this product selling well, it's up and running and profitable. What do you do once you have that successful product on Amazon? Well, most of us, from my recent experience and, and years of doing this, we start over at step one and we go out looking for another successful product. I'm not saying that's not one way to grow your business, but it's not the best way to be hoping and praying that you're going to find this next opportunity that's going to be a hero product and it'll be another winner for you. This is 100% wrong. What should you do instead, Seth? <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> we're going to clone our success, right? Clone your success. And, you know, when I, I was reading a book um, probably five years ago, most of you probably heard of Russell Brunson's Expert Secrets, and he gives this analogy of, of him in his early years of internet marketing. He would launch a, a, a digital product. He would sell it well. He'd promote it. And then as soon as he got done promoting, he went out and looked for or created another digital product. When finally someone said, listen, Russell, you're a brilliant marketer, but you're thinking about this the wrong way. What do rock bands and and uh, uh, theater arts and Broadway shows do. They don't create a new show after they sell out all the tickets in New York and on, you know, in Broadway, they just move to another location and do the same thing again. And that's where we're getting this wrong. And that's what I want you to understand today. You already have a successful product. If you're already making daily sales that are profitable on Amazon, then stop going out there looking for the next shiny object product. Instead, leverage the success and knowledge that you already have within that category. So let me ask you, if you were going to go out there and create the most highly optimized listing, where do you start? You start with your offer. What do I mean by that? Specifically a mafia offer, which Seth and I talk about extensively in our book, Private Label Millionaire Secrets. But here's the problem. Amazon as a whole has most of us sellers confused. And most of us believe that just one listing 
has to serve all customers. But let me ask you a question. If you were invited today to a workshop for e-commerce sellers, would you be here right now? Well, maybe. Even if the rest of the offer was exactly the same, but today's workshop was for e-commerce sellers, you would view this workshop as not nearly as valuable for you, right? Making this workshop for e-com sellers is just too broad. It's not nearly as compelling to you as an Amazon seller, right? And this is the exact problem that most listings have on Amazon, Seth. Yep, that's exactly right. So what we want to do is we want to speak to one specific type of, of customer at a time. And we're going to get into an example here. But imagine that you know you come to an e-commerce workshop. You have no idea what we're going to be talking about. But if you're coming to an Amazon workshop, you know that it's going to be right in the wheelhouse of things that are important to you. And the same is true for your customers on Amazon. So we don't want to speak to every customer with the same language. Megla is different than Sean. So we're going to, if we were trying to sell Megla a product on Amazon, we would use completely different language than if we were trying to sell the same product to Sean. So that's why we build completely standalone listings. We're cloning our success, but we're speaking to one customer at a time. Go ahead, Sean. And as a brand owner, you have a lot of power because you can clone your listing and have a separate listing speak directly to just one particular type of customer at a time. That's why we call this process creative cloning. When you apply this concept to your private label business, you're going to make a lot more money because think about it, you would only need to present your offer, your listing to those that are most likely to convert. If you only target those most likely to convert, then you're going to be able to charge more money. You can increase your conversions, spend much less on advertising, and make a lot more profit. Never forget, you are not in business to make sales. You're in business to make a profit. And Seth always likes to preach, revenue is vanity, profit sanity. Let's focus on profit because cash is king. Now, let's look at an example. Seth and I like to use Tylenol as an example. I don't know, Megla, is Tylenol, is that a popular brand uh, over there in your neck of the woods? Yeah, yeah, it Great. is. Yeah, okay, here so, as well. You can see that Tylenol has been using creative cloning for a very long time. And what they're doing is they're positioning their product to appeal to different types of customers with their language and messaging. You may have Tylenol for migraine, Tylenol for backache, Tylenol for headache, Tylenol for sinus congestion, that type of thing, right? But their actual product at the end of the day is exactly the same. Tylenol gets to take up more shelf space or in our case, as an Amazon seller, there's a search term results space, right? And then they get to better serve their customer by calling out specific customers with each positioning. Does this make sense? No matter which one of these Tylenol products that you pick up, whichever one speaks to your core desire, all you're going to get at the end of the day is 500 milligrams of acetaminophen. It's the exact same product. When you walk into a drugstore with a migraine headache, you might buy this, Tylenol migraine, right? But did you realize before today that Tylenol is the same, whether it's marketed for a migraine or not? Tylenol has cloned their success and added to their store shelf space to capture more market share with unique packaging and product positioning. That's exactly what we do on Amazon. Look at the ingredients. It's 500 milligrams of acetaminophen and 500 milligrams of acetaminophen, right? It's the exact same product. Now, here's a real life example of how you could make 15 times more money by niching down the same product. Seth, remember when we first discovered this? It changed everything. We launched and sold that product called Original Bamboo Pillow, right? Yep. <laughs> and, and what we discovered that if we were to sell a normal memory foam pillow without targeting a specific sub niche, then we just get normal bed pillow prices. Now, how much would you say that a normal memory foam bed pillow would sell for? 10, 15, 20 dollars. Well, for us, it was 1999. But when our pillow targeted a more specific buyer, all of a sudden we could increase the price. So we did. And the results were remarkable. Seth, walk us through these examples. 
Yep. So let's continue down the journey of how do we actually, you know, go from a broad targeting to a more specific targeting, like from Sean and everybody else to down to one specific person, maybe Megla has a neck pain. So let's talk about it. So instead of, you know, selling a generic um, bed pillow, we're going to sell a shredded memory foam pillow specifically for stomach and back sleepers. Now, if you notice in that uh, screenshot, we're not charging $19.99 anymore. We're charging you know, $39.99. So our price has doubled simply by getting more specific on who we're, we are speaking to and calling out their specific problem because we know that somebody that's a chronic snorer or a side sleeper, are gonna they're going to perceive that there's more value for them. Even though the product's the same, they're going to perceive more value. Therefore, they're willing to spend more on it. So we able, we're able to double our price. What does that do to your profit, right? So we're already at two times the price, but we're going to show you how we can do a lot better than this. Go ahead, Sean. So imagine you're suffering from terrible neck or shoulder pain, right? God forbid. And we offered you a hypoallergenic bamboo covered shredded memory foam pillow designed for shoulder and neck pain relief at a price of $104. Now keep in mind, it's the exact same pillow. It's just a different positioning. Would it be possible that if you were suffering from this, that you would consider paying that much? Yes, and they did. This is a real life example. We raised our price by 5X. Now you most likely would purchase this as well because we've spoken directly to your specific pain. So our product has a much higher perceived value, right? Versus a regular bed pillow and becomes your obvious best choice. Maybe not Seth's choice, but it is yours. Are you sold yet? Well, just for a dramatic demonstration, let's say that you just had surgery and your doctor gave you a script and, and told you to go buy a medical grade hypoallergenic adjustable shredded memory foam pillow designed specifically for post-surgery support. You would eagerly fork over $180 to get that pillow, wouldn't you? I mean, besides, it's doctor's orders. Simply changing who you're targeting with your product can dramatically impact how much you're allowed to charge. This is literally a page out of our book, Private Label Millionaire Secrets, where we break this down and tell you exactly our experience when it comes to further positioning our memory foam pillow into a sub niche market. So the idea is this, you're able to leverage the experience that you already have from your existing successful Amazon listing to clone that success, right? Grab more exposure on page one search results. That's real estate, we call it. And then command more traffic from Amazon buyers. This allows you to capture more sales you'll usually see double, yes, 100% more your very first try, and then simply repeat the process until you've dominated a category. Now, you already know you're only capturing a small percentage of the overall market for your product, right? Well, who are getting the rest of those sales? Your competitors are getting the rest. When you implement creative cloning correctly, you can capture the lion's share of all sales for your category. And we've been doing this successfully since 2014. The idea is simple to teach, but it's very hard to learn. So please, please pay attention and try to grasp this the first time. Seth, how many times have we had uh, some of our colleagues come back and go, you know what? Now, you guys taught me this four times, but I finally learned it today. Yep. So with this simple but powerful strategy, all you're really doing, okay, don't overcomplicate this, is you're repositioning some of your exact same product to appeal to a unique segment of your market. Let's say that your type of widget, whether you're selling silicone spatulas, pizza cutters, or, or bamboo pillows, your particular product is producing 1,000 sales in total on Amazon across all sellers, all, all brands, and all listings. But your listing, you're doing well, but you're only getting 100 or let's say 10% of these orders. Isn't it true if you had another successful listing just like that one that could also grab 100 orders per day, then you double your sales, right? Right. We've repeated this process up to seven times with similar results. Those other listings from your competitors are grabbing the other 900 orders. Why can't that be you? So let's say that you're selling dog leashes, okay? And things are going well for you and your listing is even ranked on page one somewhere for the keyword dog leash. But what if Megala comes to Amazon 
and she's looking for a dog leash specifically for her German Shepherd. Which one will she buy? This one for $10 or this one for $15.99 that obviously works good for her type of dog and her size of dog. She can just blindly select this leash. She doesn't have to do any more thinking about it. And she can rest assured that when it shows up, it's going to be uniquely created and, and uh, uh, compatible with her particular type of dog. Now you can capture more shelf space on Amazon, just like Tylenol did with its positioning. Maybe you have a, a Yorkie or a Collie dog leash or a Pitbull dog leash. At the end of the day, my friend, it's the exact same leash when it shows up in a package, but you position it as a golden retriever or black lab. The sky is the limit. Large dog, small dog, medium dog, female dog. You get the picture, right? Here's why this works. You can speak directly to just one single customer at a time. This allows you to charge more, convert higher, rank better, and make more money. This allows you to take up that valuable real estate on Amazon search page results. Seth, remember, we had eight listings on page one for the bamboo pillow. Yeah, we did. And, and so here's a real life example from our business. When we launched our pillow product, it got to about $30,000 a month in sales pretty quickly, but we stalled out. We couldn't grow beyond that. And so if you're just you know thinking about our business as a whole, here's what it looked like. We would try to sell a bamboo pillow and we would target everybody. And we made a little bit of money at it, you know, $30,000 per month, but we wanted to grow and we tried everything. We tried to get ranked. We tried to do giveaways. We, you know, we really pushed, um, you know, like just like spending more money on ads, like everybody tries giving away products through rebates. Right. Um, we tried split testing everything that you can imagine to grow that product. And we were still stuck at $30,000 per month. Um, I'm sure you guys have felt like this. Almost every seller we talked to, is at a point where they're like, I just want to grow, but I don't know what to do. Um, and then this is what our business turned into once we kind of figured out this creative cloning piece. Afterwards, then we had an, another listing that was targeting specifically side sleepers. We had another listing specifically targeting back sleepers and then stomach sleepers, but we didn't stop there. We made clones of each one of those subcategories and dominated those respective search results. So if you came to Amazon and typed in, uh, you know, bamboo pillow for side sleepers, you would have a huge chance to be clicking on one of our listings, even though you didn't know that it was the exact same product sold by the exact same seller. They would just look differently in search. That way, more customers would be drawn to one of our listings in search. Go ahead, Sean. Let's just say, hypothetically, we want to sell a pizza cutter, right? And let's just say these five listings are the only five that exist. The first listing is getting 53% of the sales. And this is totally made up, by the way. The second listing is getting 31, then 11, respectively. Okay. Well, let's say if you're taking up position one, position two, and position three with the same product, but a unique, uh, a unique positioning, a unique title, unique images, and unique description of bullets, if you take up those first three, first three positions, then you're capturing what I call the lion's share. I think that adds up to 95% of the market. Are you guys getting this? I hope don't overthink this. It's simple. It's like when you go fishing, right? If you put one pole and bait in the water versus 10 poles and 10 unique baits in the water, you have a better opportunity of catching a fish, right? I do a lot more drinking than I do fishing when I'm out there fishing. So usually the only <laughs> thing I catch is a buzz, but you understand the analogy, right? Our sales with this pillow went from 30,000 per month to over 300,000 per month right? That's a 10x increase. We 10x our sales and all we had to do was re-sticker a small amount of inventory with a new UPC barcode label. We of course changed our images, new titles, new bullets and description to speak more directly to a customer drawn to certain language patterns or in this case sleeping styles in each cloned listing. This was easy because we used the exact same inventory that we already had on hand. And we already know all the best keywords, so we can easily rank. We targeted the same keywords with our listing. And this was all within the exact same brand. No, you don't have to create a new brand. No, you don't have to create new packaging. No, you don't have to order more inventory. You use what you already have. Why does this work so well, Seth? 
Yeah, Sean, I mean, it's just like the analogy we have on the screen. It's like you're shooting a rifle versus a shotgun. A shotgun is trying to hit everything on the target, and a rifle is speaking to the one spot where it matters the most. If you're selling a, a pillow to somebody that sleeps on their side, they're not going to be as likely to buy it if the uh, if the title doesn't say it, if the images don't show it. So this allows us to target our buyer with laser accuracy. And what that does is it raises our conversion and it raises our ranking because of that. And every position in search on Amazon is worth a percentage of sales, just like Sean showed. So if you can have more positions on um, the search results page, you're going to make more sales. Just like having eight listings on the page for the search term bamboo pillow equated to about 10x our revenue. And that's the only change we made. So you can literally just capture more market share by niching down and having more listings targeting each specific type of customer that's in your category. Go ahead. With this, you'll capture more of the search results page and therefore you'll end up with a lot more sales. Hopefully this is making sense. Now, this is the most important question. I get asked this all the time. When should I not clone my listing? Well, it's simple actually. It's when you don't like the results that you're already seeing. People always ask us this, but the answer is simple. Don't create more of a bad situation. You only want to create more of something that's working well. In fact, the only thing worse than working in the wrong direction is working in the wrong direction enthusiastically, right? I hate that. All right, so check this out. I've prepared this specifically for your community, Magla. This is SOP action step, steps. If you go to ppro.co forward slash action list, you can see it on your screen. Uh, if you want to post that anywhere after the fact, don't forget the hyphen. This will give you a step-by-step -step guide to getting started with creative cloning. Step one, step two, step three, step four, and you can get this up and running. Double your business in the next 30 days. Now, Megala, I happen to have in about, I think it's August 22nd, okay? I have a, a webinar where Seth and I have already scheduled this, and we're doing it specifically for another partner in the industry, and we're doing a 60-minute deep dive into this. Would this be an appropriate time to invite your audience to join us on that webinar where nothing's being sold? Sure. Go oh, for it. Great. So this creative cloning is only one of the four core strategies that Seth and I use to get to one million per month pretty quickly in our business. So if you've enjoyed this limited amount of time with us today and you love today, then you're going to love even more the other three core pillars to success because really they're our best kept secrets. It's impossible for us to show you everything in 30 minutes, of course. So if you have a phone, you can scan this QR code or you can you can join this uh, Zoom call by uh, going to the link coming up. Now, we all, we're only doing this specifically for your community. So please don't go out and share this in Facebook. You know, the more people that know about these tricks and, and strategies, the less effective they come. And you're never going to get the opportunity to see this again. So don't just think you're going to wait until next time. You can go to seanstopsecrets.com and register. This will get you free access to this otherwise $1,000 training session that we're hosting for another partner. You get in there absolutely free, no strings attached. You don't have to bring a credit card. There's nothing being sold. We're just going to go into more details about exactly how we're implementing these strategies in our business. You are cordially invited to join us at seanstopsecrets.com or scan the QR code. We can open up for questions now, guys, and I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to share. Thank you so much, Sean and Seth. That was very interesting. And I mean, we do have a couple of follow-up questions. Um, and, and guys watching, if you have any questions about the strategy that Sean and Seth just shared or any other questions about Amazon, feel free to type them in the comments. I do see a couple of questions and we'll just take them shortly. But about the strategy, so is this totally within TOS? Because you're basically replicating the same product and doesn't Amazon sort of fr frown on that? Amazon's going to frown if, if, you're, uh, if your listing is exactly the same, the barcode's exactly the same. But let's say, for example, Nike is a major company. They do this all the time. You can buy mm -hmm. a, a pair of Nike sneakers from two different listings. One could be $89, one's $189, but they're positioned different. One's positioned for tennis, the other's positioned for a runner, we'll say. But when you receive the sneakers, they're the exact same product. I mean, this happens all the time, just like with Tylenol and a lot of of national household names. The only thing that we're doing here is giving us more of a chance of, of capturing a buyer's attention by uniquely positioning it to speak to his or her core desire. There's a reason, Megala, why you're purchasing a pizza cutter. 
maybe you're purchasing for your apartment. I'm purchasing for my yacht. Seth is purchasing for his Airbnb. You see, if, if this pizza cutter says this is a uh, marine grade stainless steel pizza cutter, perfect for uh, home or away when you're on your boat. Well, at the end of the day, all stainless steel is marine grade, right? But the, the, the unique position of me calling it a marine grade pizza cutter not only gets me to grab your attention if you're a boater, but it also allows me to charge a premium price. It happens all the time. How many times, Megala, have you been on a plane on a cross-Atlantic flight and you sit next to someone who got the same seat next to you for half of the price you paid for it? Is that illegal? No, not so, at all. So also, Megala, if you, uh, the brand owner gets to decide what's a new product and simply by assigning a new UPC, the brand decides what's a new product. So in Sean's example, like of Nike, if Nike creates the Air Force One shoe product and they create the Air Force Two shoe product, um, when Amazon's scanning in that inventory, they don't scan the barcode and open up the product and look at the shoe and say, well, this looks pretty much like the Air Force Two. This is the same. No, what they do is they, they say, oh, Nike has a new product. Let's scan it in and put it in the Air Force One listing. And then, and then when they get the Air Force Two listing, they've scanned it in and put it in the Air Force Two listing. It's the exact same thing. They're not going to evaluate the product on if it's the same or not. They are treating the listing as Tylenol treats their packaging of let let the brand decide what's a new product and they get to position it however they want within Amazon search. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you also mentioned, okay, we have to change the listings, the title, bullet points, description, modify all of that a little bit, um, infographics. But what about the main image? Do you, I mean, that if yeah. it's the exact same product, most likely the main image will look very similar across well, the, all of those listings. Does that image. matter at all? The, so the main image every, needs to be different for sure. Um, Sean, I think we have a little delay, but um, so Meg, if you're scrolling through search and all of the yeah. images look the same, then you basically only have one chance to get a click from a customer because that customer is going to just block out all of the, the duplicates, right? Um, what we do is we position the main image to look differently. So if you were to go to Amazon and type in bamboo pillow right now, all of the pillows essentially about look the same, but the way that the sellers have them positioned on an image is different. One's laying flat, one's propped up on a bed, one is um, sitting there with its packaging, right? So you want it to appeal to a different eye of a different customer. Um, and you definitely don't want them to be to look like clones of themselves because you're trying to pick up a bigger distribution of the sales that, you know, from customers that are searching. So yes, you want that main image to be the same, but you just have to use a little bit of creativity on how to make it um, attract a different customer. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes so sense. So I can give you another example. Um, and this is from, yeah. from our observation personally. We were selling a, a weight loss belt. It was called a, a thermal belt. I think, what was our brand name? Thermo Science, something like that. So basically this belt was used to wrap around your midsection and help burn um, burn fat and uh, sweat that out, you know, in your midsection to shrink your size, I guess is the best way to say it. Well, what we found out from our customer's perspective is that they were using this exact same belt. It was a Velcro neoprene belt to support their belly for pregnant women. So they were using it as a maternity belt. So we went and sold the exact same product, created a listing, calling it a maternity support belt, which it was, all right? And at the end of the day, the maternity belt sold for like $49.99, but the fat loss belt was like $19.99. So two and a half times the price, exact same product. The reason you buy a product may be different than the reason I buy a product. And when we can finally discover and fine tune what caused the action of me pulling the trigger and buying a product that now I can go in there and speak to you specifically for the reason that, that drives you to make a purchase. Right. And this works for all product categories, right? Whether it's toys or any product. apparel or it can work for any electronics it could work for any product. Couldn't it? Exactly. Well, I don't. I uh, I just watched this this crazy uh, movie last night with my boys. It was called uh, Joe Dirt. Has anyone ever seen this movie? It's hilariously stupid. Yeah. You haven't seen it, right? <laughs> no. So you've seen it, right, Seth? Yeah. <laughs> Surely. So remember the scene where Joe Dirt meets uh, Kicking Wing, the uh, Native American with his uh, fireworks stand. And he's only selling sparklers and snakes. And he says, why do you sell sparklers and snakes? He said, because those are the only ones I like. 
He goes, you have to sell what the customer likes for the reason that the customer wants. It doesn't matter what you like. And that, that made yeah. me, that gave me a painful reminder of a lot of us make the mistake when we're selling online that we think we're our own customer when in fact we are not our own customer. As a seller, it's not up to you to answer the question. It's up to you to ask the question, let the customer answer. And when you find out why they're buying this, then you make another listing and clone the success that you've already seen. It's that simple, cut and dry, end of story. Right. And so what about all of the keywords? So currently, I mean, what we generally do is when we have a listing and we're targeting multiple keyword phrases, we just cram all the keywords either in the bullet points or title or back end. So yeah. if we are now creating separate listings for specific you know, purposes or audiences, do we not need to do that at all? And do we need to have only keywords related to that specific avatar or that specific use? in one listing? How does how does keywords work? Megla, there's a few different ways to do cloning. The simplest way is to, you know, like in our bamboo pillow example, um, the very first clones that we ever did were clones that took advantage of the search term bamboo pillow. That was it. We knew that we couldn't rank for the search term pillow. We couldn't rank for the search term bed pillow, but every single time we would run an ad or, or buy some PPC, for the search term bamboo pillow, we would make a ton of money. And so we ranked for that keyword very well. So the first thing we did was we didn't go out there and try to find um, a subcategory of customers like side sleeper or back sleeper. The very first thing we did was we said, we know we have an opportunity here with this search term bamboo pillow. So why don't we create another listing to be on the page and take advantage of that same keyword as well? And so that's, that's what we did and our sales doubled. So instead of getting tricky and and trying to find all these new keywords, we just said, we're gonna do what's already working. And we did it and it worked. And then we did it a third time and it worked. And a fourth time and it worked. So we dominated for that specific specific search term until we couldn't dominate anymore. And then we said, okay, let's go and see if there's these other pockets of more specific buyers out there that we can also do the exact same thing. So if we figured out that side sleeper um, bamboo pillow was a really good search term for us, then we would pretty much only focus on those best search terms for that specific listing. We would show side sleepers um, in our images and our conversion was really good. And then as soon as that was proven successful, we cloned into that sub category as well. Does that help? Yeah, that makes sense. So would it be harder to do, um, say, unique products? Just say you've got a, a copper hammered water jug. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be very hard to make it look different if you're the only one selling that particular product. I oh, know the bamboo pillow is easier because it's going to get lost on a page of bamboo pillows where something more unique and, you know, a certain colour or something, is that more difficult? I mean, I'm trying to think of a way to make something like that more unique because obviously yeah. with India sourcing, we do a lot of more unique products. So a lot of the products people are selling mm -hmm. might only be listed by them and not by anyone else. The exact thing, does that make sense? The look? Yeah, yeah, it does. So if you show a, a female using that product, then you show a let's say a, a mid-age female using that product, and then you show a young female college student using that product, you show a man using that product, you show a couple using that product. When you're scrolling through Amazon, you're looking for something that you can resonate with, and we want to see, we need the social proof. I mean, as, as humans, psychologically, we want to know that that product's going to work for our need without doing any further research. So if you're looking for a bamboo pillow for a side sleeper specifically, you don't know that as a seller unless you ask the question, right? And you're scrolling through Amazon and you see pillow perfect for side sleeper and you see someone sleeping on their side. It's the exact same pillow that's used for a back sleeper. It's just positioned differently. I actually was walking through Walmart. I know you've heard of this company, Walmart, and I saw these pillows and I sent Seth, I just found them in a text, but we're not connected on WhatsApp. Megla, I was going to forward them to you, but it was side sleeper, stomach sleeper, back sleeper, hypoallergenic, and then there was another one I found. The only difference was the packaging, period. That's it. The only difference. I took them out of the bag and checked them all out right there at eye level. And um, I, I can send those to you, Megla. Maybe you can add them to show notes or something. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So the other question is, is this misleading customers? I mean, is there sort of an ethical side to it? 
So, Megla, it's most likely you're only going to sell one product to one. Like Ag's an example and Margaret's example. She's going to attract one customer that's going to buy the, the copper kettle, right? But so what are we trying to do here? We're just trying to convince them that this particular one that we're selling is the one for them. So we are trying to build a listing that perfectly is attracting the person who's going to get the best benefit out of it. So yes, it would be misleading if your product didn't actually work for the uses that you're claiming. But in our case, for our pillow, our pillow was adjustable. So it could work for all of those use cases. So it, it filled the need. If we actually sold a pillow that was um, non-adjustable and it only worked well for back sleepers, but we were claiming it would work for stomach sleepers, then we would instantly get negative reviews. And yes, you would be right that that listing should be punished because it's misleading the customer. But if if that kettle is positioned for a middle-aged woman and that's who is looking for it, she's going to feel the closest to that listing and she's going to buy from that listing. But it doesn't, it's not misleading. She's getting the exact same result that she would have gotten if she would have bought from the other listing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so with sense. your images, you don't show a side sleeper in the main image, though, do you? You you don't do that like against hospital. Well, when we were doing that to show a plane, example, yeah. that was that was in 2014, 2015. So the the rules were a little different. But um, what we ended up gravitating towards was just positioning the main product to sit differently, or to sit differently with its packaging, if it if it's good looking packaging, or to show multiple angles in the same image. Right? There's always a way to differentiate it, or you could even show a hand holding it. A lot of times, um, Amazon doesn't mind if there's a hand placed in there. Um, you know, TS or TOS is a uh, something to be interpreted, but uh, you you s essentially want to have it look different for the customers and attract a different customer with each listing. Okay, okay. makes sense. Um, cool. So we've got let's see a couple of questions here. So first of all, Vinita says. Thank you so much, Sean. It said, I'm going to apply this strategy with my new brand. My question is, do we need to change the brand name as well with each listing? You don't need to change the brand name. It's still Nike, okay? It's still a Mr. Coffee coffee maker, whether it's large, medium, or small, you know, whether it's fast brew or slow brew. So the idea is just to expand your brand within your the knowledge base that you already have and the success that you've already seen. Benita, I think that's a great question. Yeah, awesome. Um, cool. So we've got this one question that's totally unrelated. So um, Mahmoud Osman says, how can I start selling globally without stock products in Amazon, in FBA? I lose a lot of money on Amazon. Please ask him what can we do? So I guess his question is, he's sending products to FBA and then he's got a, he's got, he's getting many returns. I use Amazon last six months, but I reserved almost 60% returns. I don't know how to control this. I lose a lot of money. My packaging is good. My products are of good quality. I delivered my product on time running ads, but my sales are not growing. How can I control returns? And Amazon places fake orders as well. What can I do? I love it. What so the, it, how, to, how to expand globally without having to send product to FBA? Is that the underlying question? Well, I guess there are two questions. One is, you know, he's getting a lot of returns. So how, how does he manage returns? So, and then the qu second question is, how does he sell globally? And I can answer the second question because he's most likely, Mahmoud, are you based in India? Where are you based out of? Let me know. I can answer that question. But what to do for returns? Any suggestions? Well, so if you're getting a return, there's a reason. And it's probably due to unmet expectations on the customer side. If they're expecting... Um, a side sleeper pillow that won't adjust for them and is actually meant for back sleepers, they're going to be irritated and it's not going to work and they're going to get a poor night's sleep and they're going to return the product. So what is he selling? What is he portraying to sell? And why aren't the customers happy? That's the only reason why a customer would return is because they didn't get the result that they're looking for. So either their product's breaking or it's not filling the expectation that they had when they bought it. Um, and returns are a huge no-no in Amazon. They don't want to process returns. They don't want unhappy customers. So it makes total sense that your sales aren't growing. You can spend all the money in the world on ads, but Amazon's going to suppress your listings. Your listings are going to get deranked because you're getting so many returns. You're going to get negative reviews. So no one's going to actually buy your product. So you have to fix what's going on there first. It's probably either a quality issue or a representation issue on the listing. 
Does that help? Another hack for that too, um, Seth, uh, there's a couple of partners in the industry that we network with who control the uh, the return process within the Amazon app. Um, I was trying to think of the name of that, of that partner, but basically uh, when your customer, uh, Muhammad, when your customer goes to Amazon to create the return uh, within the mobile app or online, the, the option to just uh, create a return or return the product goes away. Instead, there's a button that says get product support. And what that does is it forces your customer to speak to online support before they're able to get a return. And there are a couple of software companies that, that uh, facilitate this. Seth, can you think, is it on support? It's called, on, it's called onsite support.io. That's it. O-N-S-I-T-E, onsite support.io. Um, you can uh, uh, tell them that you heard it here on the on this program, the MMK show. And uh, I can't. What's our contact over there, Seth? What's his name? His name is Isaac. Isaac. There you go. Talk to Isaac at onsite support. See, his his brain is 14 years younger than mine. He retains this information. So I'm a senior <laughs> citizen over here. So Isaac at onsite support.io, and he can uh, create that scenario, Muhammad, where your customer will first have to interact with his customer service reps that you train to try to talk them into keeping the product or keeping that return outside of Amazon's algorithm or the watchful eye of Amazon's algorithm so that it doesn't hurt your ranking. Um, and if I may, Magla, uh, one of the things that we do to sell globally is I, I fulfill product from Asia. So if you're, okay. if you're I, I'm sure you have a similar uh, scenario in India, but yeah. um, my friend Anita at the, uh, epacketexpress.com. If you tell her I sent you, uh, tell her Sean Hart sent you, Anita, A-N-I-T-A, -A, tell her I sent you to ePacket Express. They'll give you free warehousing, meaning you can store your product up to one pallet for no cost in their warehouse. And when you send orders, they'll fulfill the orders for you directly from their warehouse in China. And that's ePacket Express. E-Packet Express. Okay. And so um, do they do FBM or is this, are they sending to FBA or are they doing FBM directly from China? This will be FBM directly from China. FBM. Um, okay. Korea. Yeah. Hopefully it's a small product. They can use the E-Packet service. Otherwise it's pretty uh, cost prohibitive if it's, if it's over E-Packet, which is a certain size and weight. But if you reach yeah. out to it, Anita, ePacketExpress.com, she'll, she'll give you all the ins and outs of what's available there. Right, and, and that's shipping from China. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Now, I was going to say, Mohammed should probably check. The voice of the customer should have heaps of comments in there. If he's getting that scale of returns, there must be a lot of comments in voice of customer. So, I mean, there should be answers in there as to why people are not yeah. happy. Um, you know, a simple way of checking that to num you know would be number one. Yep, exactly. So uh, yeah. definitely have a lot of room to improve the product. Ask why, and then uh, and then make the uh, obvious um, changes in your product. So, can I in private chat? I'm going to give you Anita's email address. Sure. Go, go there you go. It. If you want to share that, if you tell her I sent you, you'll get uh, you can do up to one pallet worth of storage. There's no monthly storage fee, so you can test that out. I think they charge. I don't quote me on this. It's been a couple of years since I've used her. I send people over all the time, but it used to be one dollar per package fulfillment where they will print and uh, apply the label and hand it to the postman for $1 per, per package. They may have raised it. If, if so, not by much. Right. And also Mohammed, if you are a fulfilling from India, um, I'm not really sure where you're based out of, but if you are fulfilling from India, there are lots of other services that do FBM. So if you want to attend Ecom India Summit, I mean, you can get a lot of information about logistics, you know, from India. Um, and you can also meet many of these service providers because they are coming there as exhibitors. So Ecom India Summit is October 8th and 9th, and that's also where Sean is coming to speak, which we are so excited about. And let's quickly talk about that as we wrap up. So um, first of all, Sean um, is gonna be at Ecom India Summit and India Sourcing Trip. Now Ecom India Summit is on October 8th and 9th. And then India Sourcing Trip is from October 10th to the 17th. Of course, Sean is not gonna stay for the entire sourcing trip, but he's gonna be there for a couple of days. So Sean, what are you most, yeah. 
Go ahead. Well, I'm bringing my wife with me, and uh, we're, we, we plan on arriving on the early morning of the 7th, and then okay. uh, on the evening of the 10th, because I have to go to uh, White Label Expo in Germany, and then also right. to a bar camp in, uh, in Munich, like back to back right after your event. So we'll be there about three days. I'm most Amazing. excited about actually having yeah. uh, people on the ground in India who can make things happen. I think I've shared with you some of my frustration in the past, Megala, about uh, being able to identify product opportunity in India, but not being able to effectively uh, get that out because of the lack of infrastructure and, and logistics that I'm not familiar with. So that and uh, enjoying some uh, some good Indian food and meeting amazing entrepreneurs. That's what I, <laughs> I've been in this for. And I just shared with you, actually, Isaac's email address in private chat as well for that on-site. Are you support. okay for me to display it on the screen? I mean, that, he's a he's a valuable asset to the industry. So if anyone wants to reach okay. out, yeah, that's okay. our contact. There we go. Okay, so Isaac at onsite support.io, and this is to change the button from return to contact support. That's something that we should do, Mark, for <laughs> for our listings as well. Maybe <laughs> yeah. have a look at that one today for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the way I understand it is, is they will they will chat with you within the Amazon platform. So this is a certified Amazon partner, and the idea is to lower the returns. And if you do get a return, we'll try to talk the customer into shipping it directly back to you for a replacement. That way, it stays outside of the Amazon, so they won't they won't ding your uh, ranking metric. Right. So, Mohammed, you should definitely send an email to Isaac and get in touch with him. Cool. And so, um, I mean, Sean, you're, you've been to India in the past, right? And this is, uh, is this your second trip? This will be my second trip. Um, I was like three hours away in Dubai and I told the family, I said, I've always needed to go to India to check out the, uh, help me with the pronunciation, but Chumla Czech market or something and right outside of the old, old Delhi. Oh, Chandni Chalk. Yes, yes. <laughs> Did you go there? <laughs> Are you serious? You went to Chandni Chalk? Oh my God. That is like so overwhelming. I mean, I would, I get lost there. I'm scared of going to that place. You went to Chandni Chalk. Oh my gosh. Good. That did. place and is I intense. Opportunity, but like I said, it's cash and carry. There's no transportation. <laughs> there's no infrastructure to get it to the port. I was like a kid in the candy store with opportunity, but I didn't have the proper contact. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Right. And now you have the contacts, John. We are here. We've got a team of sourcing experts on the ground. We are the India sourcing experts. So if you need or if your community needs to source anything from India, uh, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us for sure. So, yeah, Thank you. That's, I just that's, met one of your colleagues at Ecom Summit. I was speaking in Chicago last week and I run across. Right. Is it uh, Lokesh? Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> you know knew everything about you said you were oh, okay <laughs> i'm sure he didn't have nice things to say about <laughs> us <laughs> actually have a lot of nice things to say <laughs> he's, 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 the okay. he's, he's, he's our competition well he said nothing <laughs> ill he uh, he loves megalit he loves what you're doing and uh, he just bragged you up oh, oh that's that's nice of him <laughs> that's nice. yeah appreciate that <laughs> Cool. So yeah, guys, I mean, check out India sourcing trip. Uh, if you if you don't know what this is, this is an eight day um, trip that's all about learning about sourcing from India. We visit a, a trade show that is an export focused trade show with over 4000 exhibitors, export ready manufacturers that produce really beautiful uh, home products, gift products, fashion accessories um, made out of you know metal, wood, fabric, a lot of different materials. And we also help you, uh, we also get you to experience Indian culture. So we visit the Taj Mahal, which is, of course, one of the seven wonders of the world. And Sean, did you visit Taj Mahal on your previous trip? I did not. I was in and out business only. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. Yes, that's going to be exciting. <laughs> I've been there so many times and every time I see it, I'm like, wow, OK, this is this is amazing. <laughs> use it in sort of a, uh, a cliche, you know, it's like this is not the Taj Mahal, but, you know, it's like it's, it's a very famous uh, American cliche, right? Seth? Yeah, it is. <laughs> 
Cool. So everybody watching, uh, you can use the code PPP300 for $300 off um, on India Sourcing Trip. And of course, as I mentioned, if you are an attendee at India Sourcing Trip, you can join Ecom India Summit for free. This is a two-day conference where we focus on helping sellers start and scale their global business. It's focused entirely on e-commerce exports, selling globally. So Mohammed, this is a must attend for you. The ticket prices are ridiculously low. If you are coming on India sourcing trip, if you, um, you know, are from the US or Australia, you know that such conferences cost hundreds uh, and sometimes even thousands of dollars. But this conference here is very, very, very affordable. And we've got you know speakers like Sean Hart, we've got Mike Jackness, uh, Dave Bryant, Devir Cohen from Israel, uh, Ritu Java from PPC Ninja, and plenty of other, plenty of other uh, you know experts who are traveling from overseas. Oh, we've got uh, John Pollardin from the U.S., Chris Thomas from Australia. Who else do we have, uh, Kevin? <laughs> do you remember? Um, who am I missing? <laughs> I think you've. I think you've done most of them. I think. Yeah. yeah well, ben, 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 ben Leonard. Ben Leonard. But I think Ben is. Uh, yes, Ben Leonard. Yes, Hello. yes, absolutely. Just Can I attend this conference program. with going on India sourcing trip? So Stuti, if you are, um, you know, you can message me separately and we can talk about it. But if you are going on India sourcing trip, if you're a paid attendee on India sourcing trip, then yes, the conference is absolutely free for you. And even the workshop that we're doing on AI and how do we leverage AI for increasing our e-commerce sales is free for India sourcing trip attendees. So yes, yes, of course you can you can attend the conference without India sourcing trip. Absolutely, go to ecomindiasummit.com and um, you can buy a ticket over there. You don't have to be an India sourcing trip attendee. So just go to this website and buy the ticket right away. Tickets are available. So that's another option. And Mohammed, you should do this too. Go to ecomindiasummit.com and get your ticket. So Megla, if you don't mind, I would love to just say something about your sourcing trip. Um, Absolutely. Okay? Thank you. And, and whichever one of you are, are creating these banners on the fly in StreamYard, you're brilliant at that. I would love to have That's you on me. my screen. As, you, <laughs> yeah. as, as you're speaking, you're writing this out. Wow. Yeah. yeah I've got all the banners ready. So I'm just so switching I've, banners. Uh, uh, Seth and I created the very first of its kind sourcing trips to China back in 2014. This is not oh. an easy thing to do, guys. And 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 when we first set out, we, we thought, well, we're going to get 10 people. Well, the first trip we had 45 people. It was overwhelming and there was so much good feedback. So here's what I'm saying. I don't do sourcing trips anymore as a host. I burn out on that back in like 2017. There's so many people doing it, but anytime, and I'm not talking to you, Megan, I'm talking to your audience. Anytime you can get someone in a foreign country or even domestically roll out and share with you the network of service providers, sourcing agents, shipping agents, this saves you so much time and money that it's ridiculous. Like this small amount of money that you're charging to bring folks into India and expose us to your entire network, Megla, it's insane. Like I, I really think uh, you should see a doctor about this. And then again, <laughs> giving $300 off. It's like when you can take one single shortcut just from plugging into someone else's network, it can save you millions of dollars or more, depending on how big your business is, right? You don't have to make the mistakes that the rookies make. You don't have to get cheated by suppliers. You don't have to learn the language. You don't have to find out how to export like I tried to do when I was in that crazy market. At, you know, I didn't get mugged there or anything, but it's, it's Thank God. <laughs> absolutely Just, a yeah, no so brain. We, we, also, we also do factory visits. Um, we yes, go to, I to, to, mention that. to, to two different regions um, to... Yeah, check out factories that we've um, vetted and yep. visited in, in the past. That would, so okay. they open so Not only is it a cultural experience, you literally absolutely. walk away with an MBA in India sourcing. There's yeah, no other place that you can learn these things unless yeah. you're on site with people who have been there and done that who are willing to open up the book and say, here, meet Kevin, meet Megla, meet Margaret, and our entire network. Absolute no-brainer, the best money you could ever spend. And we, we just totally we just love organizing these these trips, um, you know, and we we spend so much time um, sort of you know vetting um, each factory that we visit. We spent we've actually spent time at some of the factories, um, you know, in the past, um, 
and you know we sort of know know the people um, very well at this sort of now. Yeah. And each time we go back to their factory, you know, they 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 just open the doors and they're so. Uh, I, I, you know, they obviously they want to do business. I mean, that's what it's all about. But right. you know, to actually go into someone's factory and be treated, you know, with the VIP treatment. Mm -hmm. um, this is how this is made. This is how that's made. And this yeah, process. The life process you can only do so much online and through email. Yeah. When you're face to face, toe to toe, belly to belly, yeah. negotiating, opportunities open up, and prices drop. Quality gets better. So, Muhammad, you having quality problems? If you go to the factory and make the effort to talk to your supplier face to face, everything changes because no one does that. No one's willing to do it. I've saved millions of dollars just by making a factory visit. And I would, you know, sure, I had a great price and great quality and support before, but I was literally the only person to ever visit the factory and say, hey, you know what? I want to take this business more serious and basically roll out the red carpet, bring out the big guns, get to meet the boss and the owner of the factory. And they want to support you when you're there with them because they never see this. And that's when opportunity comes up. I saved just by cutting the price, the cost on one product, $16 that saved me on this one product. And we were selling 150,000 units per year. Do the math on wow. that, Kevin. It's $16 savings. And the guy let me name one of his children and he let me drive his Porsche back to the hotel that night. <laughs> like, out of curiosity, what, what did you name him? <laughs> Harmony. It was a it was a, a little girl. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Harmony. That's lovely. Yeah, that's beautiful. Lovely. <laughs> Amazing. And you know, the other thing is that in India, especially, I mean, this is true in China as well, but relationships are just so important in India. So if you meet a supplier face to face, you get so much better treatment, you know, as opposed to somebody who's just reaching out to them via you know a website or or via email. I mean, they know that you're serious. You've traveled all the way to India, you've spent the time and effort and money to come all the way. So of course you're a serious buyer. So, I mean, who are they going to respond to, you know, when they get an email from you versus somebody who's just emailed them, you know, online, of course, they're going to respond to you. And we've had situations like this where, you know, one attendee, she reached out to a supplier and she didn't mention initially that she was from India sourcing trip. And the supplier was like, okay, yes, what do you want? And, you know, he was like, a bit wishy-washy, wasn't replying to her very promptly. And then she mentioned, oh, I met you at India Sourcing Trip. And then he just changed and he was so quick to respond to him and he set up a call and, you know, it just changed everything. So that makes a huge, huge, huge difference. It really does. It's it's what we call a transfer of trust. If you already have the relationship yeah. or someone in your network does and you say, hey, this, I want you to meet Sean Hart. He's a seller. He wants to talk to you about your product. That's like transferring the trust that you've already built. You're cashing in on the goodwill and the social credit of someone else's network. And there's just no price tag that you can put on that. What you guys are doing is just remarkable. And I just want to commend you for that because I know it's a tremendous amount of work, but you're changing lives and you're opening up opportunities. We love to network with entrepreneurs and we love to help other entrepreneurs achieve more. And I think that's what you're doing there. So kudos to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, uh, let's um, wrap up here. So thank you so much, Sean and Seth, for um, sharing your incredible strategy today. We're going to think about trying it as well for our brands. <laughs> right, Mark? I'm sure you're... Yeah, well, I, I'm I thinking like, which, which ones we're going yeah. to, to try with. So, yeah. Sorry, I well. knew it. <laughs> I, can actually smell, I can actually smell the wood burning. I was watching the <laughs> yeah. places we're going through. And because of that, uh, with this new brand that we're sort of working on at the moment. Yes. I, could sm I could smell the wood burning in their brains as, as he was talking. Yeah, so uh, Margaret, Kevin, feel free to reach out to Seth and I would be more than happy to jump yep. on a call with you and give you Thank some you. more details Good specifically. Day. And check out that action list that I shared at pppro.co. Yep. I think you have it in the notes there. Uh, oh, you shared it with the audience. But that'll yeah. give you, Margaret, the uh, step by yeah. step, step one, step two, step three of how to implement creative cloning. I know you're going to love it. You'll be a huge, uh, a huge fan of it. You'll want to, you'll want to sing praises. Yeah, well, the easy sense. part it is, it's, me. it makes we, sense to got, me. Yeah, we've got access to the products in the factory, so we can quickly change the yeah. barcodes as they go out. Hey, Megla, that'll be yeah. easier. Yep. Yeah. So, I own the factory. Big advantage. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> or at least part of it. <laughs> Great. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Seth and Sean. And Sean, look forward to seeing you in really India. Really appreciate it.
All right. Thank you all. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye, Bye everyone.